This video is an introduction to nomenclature. Nomenclature is just the chemistry word for naming of different compounds. In this video we're going to look at naming binary covalent compounds. In a first year chemistry course you're only going to look at binary covalent compounds. It's the only type of covalent compounds you're going to look at. Binary just means you have two elements in that compound. Before we can start naming binary covalent compounds, we have to look at what a covalent compound is. Covalent compounds are also called molecules. Covalent molecules are made up of non-metal atoms bonded together. This periodic table has different colored blocks on it, and the light blue blocks are the ones we're looking at for the non-metals. So you see hydrogen on the left, and everything else is on the right-hand side. Also, we have these gray color blocks, which we call metalloids. They will also take place in covalent molecules. So if we draw the stair steps, we start to the left of boron, we can draw what we call the stair steps, and they just look like a set of stairs. And what those stairs do is they show us the difference between the metal side of the periodic table, which is the dark blue and the purples, and the right side of the periodic table, which is light blue nonmetals. On the stair steps sit what we call the metalloids. The top and bottom of every stair step holds the metalloids, with the exception of aluminum. Aluminum, you know from everyday use, is actually a metal, but the rest that are on the top and bottom of each stair step are what we call the metalloids. So to the right of the stair step or on the stair step, with the exception of aluminum, those are the things that are going to take place in covalent molecules. In this periodic table, that's the gray and the light blue blocks. You will never see the dark blue blocks or the purple blocks, which are all metals, in covalent molecules. And so if you see those in your compound, then you're not going to use this naming system that we're going to go through in this video. Again, metals never form covalent molecules. So the first thing we have to ask when we're going to name a compound is how many atoms are there? And we have our system for naming um, covalent compounds based on the Greek system for numbering, where we have mono meaning one, di meaning two, tri three, tetra four, penta five, and so on and so forth. Much like your shapes in geometry, especially when you get to the higher numbers. You will get a sheet in class with these prefixes on them um, for your notes. So we use these prefixes to tell us how many atoms of each element a molecule has. If it has one of some element, we would put mono first. If it has two of some element, we would put di. Three, we put tri, and so forth. Since we're dealing with binary compounds, that means we have two atoms. The second atom that we name we're always going to end in an IDE. So if we have carbon and oxygen, the oxygen is going to be an oxide. Much like when you hear carbon dioxide, you got the oxide part, the IDE for the oxygen. If there's an O or an A end of a prefix and there's a vowel right after it, we tend to drop that O or an A. So if we're using four oxygens, instead of tetraoxide, we're going to do tetroxide. If it's one oxygen, instead of monooxide, it'd be monoxide, like carbon monoxide that you're familiar with. Finally, the prefix mono is never used for the first element of a name. So if there's only one of the first element in, an, in a compound, we just do that compound's name. We drop the mono. So carbon dioxide is carbon dioxide, CO2. It's not monocarbon dioxide. We do not put the mono there. So let's try it. Here we have a carbon atom and an oxygen atom. The carbon atom comes first, so we're just going to name it as it is. There's only one of them, and since we don't use mono for the first element, we're just going to write carbon. There's also only one oxygen, but since it's the second element, we do have to use the prefix mono, and we also have to have an ending of IDE. So instead of oxygen, we have to do mono 
and then oxide. And we drop that extra O, so we do monoxide, carbon monoxide. The next molecule looks very similar, except for it has two oxygens instead of one. This would be, we would name carbon dioxide for the two. Next one's different. We have two nitrogens and three oxygens. The first element, again, we just use the element's name, but we have to put a prefix if it's not a one. So this has to be dinitrogen. And we have three oxygens, so it's going to be trioxide with that I-D-E ending. Next one, we have one iodine, three chlorines. That's going to be iodine. Tri chlor, and we need that I-D-E ending, chloride. Next one, we have two phosphorus atoms, five oxygen atoms. We have diphosphorus. Pentoxide. Again, we drop that extra A, that extra valsa. Next one, we have carbon and four bermines. We get carbon tetrabromide. Next one is we have two arsenic atoms and three sulfur atoms. An arsenic, as we said before, that lays on the stair step, so it is a metalloid, but metalloids can be covalent molecules, metals cannot. So arsenic's okay. Our next one, we have two arsenic atoms, three sulfur atoms. <clears throat> Arsenic is a metalloid, but we said metalloids on those stair steps can create covalent molecules. So we can write this the same way we have been. Where we have two arsenic, so we have di-arsenic. Three sulfur atoms gives us tri, and we need that IDE ending, it becomes sulfide. Now let's try the other way. We have dinitrogen monoxide. So we know we have nitrogen and oxygen. Di means we have two nitrogen atoms. So we write the symbol for nitrogen, which is a capital letter N. Di means we have two of those. So we do a subscript, the number two. And then monoxide, we have one oxygen atom. Since there's only one, we do not need to put a one. It's assumed to be one. So we have N2O. Next one, we have carbon tetrachloride. Since there's no prefix, we know we only have one carbon atom, since we drop mono. And then tetrachloride, we do the symbol for chloride, which is Cl. Tetra means we have four chloride atoms. CCl4. Phosphorus tribromide. We have phosphorus. There's no prefix, so there's only one of them. And then we do a bromine atom, because of the bromide, and there's three of them. Tribromide three bromine atoms, PBr3. Silicon's another one of our metalloids, but we name it just the same. Silicon, we write its symbols Si. Again, there's no prefix, so there's just one of them. Dioxide means O2. The next one has a prefix. It's dinitrogen, just like the first one. So we write nitrogen. Di means two, so we have two nitrogens. Tetroxide comes from tetra and oxygen, so we have four oxygens. Carbon disulfide, we have a carbon, sulfide comes from sulfur, di means two. And finally, we have sulfur trioxide, means one sulfur and three oxygens. In class, you'll do more examples of these in practice writing names and formulas for covalent compounds. 
With this sort of problem, it's just a matter of practicing over and over and over again to really learn the rules for naming and formula writing and getting really good at it. This video will be posted here so you can always go back to it if ever you forget the rules or how to know if something's covalent or not.